that is unique to you. I mean, we have, you may have home base apertures that you use. You may use MELF patterns in order to control tombstoning. Um, every single place that assembles printed circuit boards, you can't go to his place and use his equipment and get the same results. Why is that? You have the same equipment, you can't use the same results. I, I've, I've sent stencils back in the old days. <laughs> we used to be the only stencil house for compact computers when they had the facility in, in Houston. Um, and they had on their aperture list, all stencils must be done by SMT, where I worked at before. And we made stencils for them and sent them to Brazil. We made stencils for them, sent them to, to France. We made stencils for them and sent them to uh, Maine and to North Carolina. Almost every single place that we sent stencils to, they, had, they, they came back and said, it doesn't work. Compact computers use the seven mil stencil to print uh, 0.5 millimeter B, uh, QFPs. And they used the four mil stencil for the passives that were on the bottom side of their, their jobs. And they sent this over to the people in Boston, and they said, we can't get paste to come out of this stencil, the seven mil stencil. Yet, Compact specifically sent them the paste, sent them the boards, and said, this is our process. They had the same equipment, and they couldn't get the same results. So we had to make them a stencil using a step stencil, because that's, that's how they successfully printed on those things. They used a, a, a seven mil step down to five mil for the fine pitch devices. But why is that? Anyone got any ideas? Is this a black art? I mean, isn't there mathematics to prove that, you know, the same thing should work in every place? You go, that earlier slide that I said, uh, um, I think a, a lot of the factor is, uh, the space, your environment. I know we make stencils for everyone around the country, and I will tell you, you guys up here have a much more difficult time printing and assembling stencils than someone who's in Florida or Texas or California. I don't know if it's the humidity, I don't know if it's the Mason-Dixon line, I don't know what it is, but there is something that it's much more difficult to get the same results here. People in California, they order five mil stencil for everything. You have coplanarity issues, doesn't matter. The stencil prints seven and a half mils uh, of paste height. They don't get slumping, they don't get bridging, populate all day long. Can you guys do that here? So hopefully there is a, some, some kind of solution to uh, to figuring that out. You went too fast, Norm. <laughs> no, you didn't. I guess I forgot another slide. Um, there's something. <laughs> there's something we used to call it. That's very strange. How come it's. See, so you can tell I don't do these things all the time. I even reviewed it this morning. Um, there's the area ratio. We used to call this the surface tension ratio, but I guess, I don't know, that's a, a non-engineering term or something like that. So all the publications and everything now, now, nowadays calls it, they call it the area ratio. Well, again, to uh, go against Bob's wishes, I changed the name so that it would be MRC, I mean, Mike's Release Calculations. Now go next slide. Bob's over there rolling his eyes, so we'll call it the area ratio. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> this is the most important thing to take out of this presentation. And probably all the other presenters, I'm giving you guys a clue, are going to mention this. The area ratio, in order to determine that paste is going to release out of the holes, which is more than half of the battle. Okay, almost half the battle. So you don't really have to copy that down too much because 
I have a gift for you guys that has this on there. <laughs> oh boy, they say. <laughs> All right. Anyone bored yet when I break? No. <laughs> We're going to now talk about your process. Um, back in ooh, 1994, I worked for a company, again, SMT. I can say that they're no longer in existence. Um, we had a, a daily whip of about 300 stencils. And so I get this call from a contract manufacturer, an engineer who's been reading up on some uh, stencil aperture modifications. And uh, he said, uh, oh, I didn't get a call. He, he sent in a new order. And I recognize this order because he's ordered it before. And then being a Trekkie, you know, was the, the code name was Spock. So I remember that. I said, oh, we've had this before. So we look at the data and he has aperture openings that violate your surface tension ratio. In the old days, we had an aspect ratio that basically, even though he's in Florida, uh, would not release paste. So I call this, the call the guy, I say, hey, Don, uh, you know, I, you sent in your order and you're telling us that you want everything printed one-to-one, -one, that you've already done the modifications. And he says, yes. I said, well, there's some things about the design that we see that you're not going to get paste release. And so he says, well, I've done the modifications. I want it one-to-one. -one. OK. So we uh, ship him the stencil. Um, the following week, we get the sister board of uh, this job. It's called Dupau. And same thing. He's done another couple other manipulations. But again, the openings are not big enough, so Pace is going to release out of the stencil. So I call him again. I say, hey, Don. It's Mike Bina again. Um, you know, he's sending this new board, and it's got uh, problems again where paste isn't going to release out of these openings. And so uh, Don says to me, he says, um, he says uh, Mike, listen. I know that those after openings are the size they are. I designed them. I want you to cut the stencil one to one. And don't call me again about this, because I'm the engineer. And you just put holes in metal. So I just put holes in metal. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of a turn the tables on you. It's a quiz. You didn't know you were having a quiz, did you? This is a printing problem. And I'm looking for a volunteer to give me the answer. No volunteers? Okay, here's your, uh, here's your picture of your, your supposed paste brick that you're supposed to be, you want to print. And the blue represents the, what you actually did print. And then your, an your choice of answers are one, two, or three. So what is the problem here? It's a trick question. Three. None of the above. Who said that? We have a prize for you. Katie, oh good. Of course, there's nothing. You would love to have a brick like that printed every time. That's a tr it's a true question. Okay. But most people, I know, and the first thing that came into your mind was the stencil, right? Number two, Norm. Or it's B. Another question. There's your, your paste brick that you printed. That's the hypothetical one that you wanted. We have an, an answer? Volunteer? You, you're disqualified now. You, you already have one. And what's your name? Jeff. Jeff? Thanks, Jeff, for rescuing me there. I appreciate it. Four. Who said four? Oh. Don't open those yet. I, did I say that earlier? <laughs> All right, Norm. Printing problem Z. 
You're going to go with four? That's not the correct answer. <laughs> four. We'll see. What's your name? Eric. Eric, I'm going to give it to you because the answer is really three. It's four and five. And since you said both, I'll... But what do I know? I just put holes in stencils. Metal, not in stencils. All right. Are we...